So the A analysis for the alert. What tells you there's a problem? How are you getting to, to start that process? What tells us there's a problem? Now, I told you guys I was a cop, and so I do like most cops. I investigate the space I'm in. So I took a little tour of this church. Any, anybody from this church in the room? Beautiful facility. I tried to get in your sanctuary, but the doors was locked, so good job. <laughs> but here's what, I, here's what I learned on my walkabout. This is a very large facility. Very nice facility. So our alert could be very different based on where we are in this facility. If, if I'm way on this other side down this way, and, and the shots start or the violence start in the sanctuary, I may not ever hear it down here. It, it may not, that sound or that, that visual may not make it to me at the opposite end of this building. But those who are in that immediate space need to identify that alert and then respond to that alert. The alert could be several things. It could be the, the shot fired. It could be the person start yelling and screaming before the violent act starts. It could be an announcement. It could be uh, people running. I mean, it could be a wide range of things. One of the things we as humans do in the face of danger is we try to rationalize what we see, right? So that's, that's a condition of how we are. Typical responses are fight, flight, or freeze. But that response generally does not happen until we start to rationalize what we just saw, right? So somebody stands up in this room with a gun and starts shooting. Some of us may run out of here. Some of us may look and go, what is he doing? Is he really shooting people? Is a gun? What's happening right now? Right? That's a part of that freeze. No, he can't be doing that. This is church. People don't bring guns to church. Before we get into that response, what we have to do is train people to immediately recognize that alert and now enact the plan. The shorter we close that gap and we make that time response from alert to, no, this is really what's happening, I need to do something about it, that's when we start reducing casualty numbers. But we have to train that. You know, anybody know the last time a school-aged child died in a school fire? December 1st, 1958. Why have we not lost a kid in a school fire in this country since December 1st, 1958? Fire drills. Any educators in the room? Ma'am, you do fire drills at your school? Yes, you do fire drills. Let me ask you a question. Are you teaching those kids how to walk? No. They've come to you knowing how to walk, right? So what are we teaching them in that fire drill? We're teaching them how to respond quickly to a stimulus, an alert. So when they hear that bell, they see the strobe light, they don't have to ponder what is happening. So through repetition, a condition of learning, we've trained them, when you hear the bell, get up and get out as fast as you can out the closest exit. We're not teaching them how to walk. Folks, I submit to you, this is no different. The only difference is the stimulus is not a fire alarm anymore. It's gunfire. But we need to train people that alert so that they respond very quickly. It's no different than that fire drill that a kid's been doing since they were 5 to 18 from K to 12. We've just repeated the process over and over, 
condition of learning is repetition. That's why. Schools have not stopped catching on fire. We just taught people how to respond through that alert. Alert. 